Our story begins with an academy where human students study and live with vampire blood. Humans, who are enslaved and despised, must obey all orders of their vampire masters, including offering their blood to them. People also deceive themselves and despise each other, flattering their masters, considering themselves real slaves. In this academy, and in this world, vampires have dominated since the battle more than ten years ago between humans and bloodsuckers. That day, in a final battle, the vampires pursued all the ringleaders who dared to resist them, the last of whom fled in fear. Blood was everywhere, terror was rampant in the streets. In one house, the young mother stood outside the door, telling the two children, if anything happened outside, not to go outside, to keep quiet in the room. The two children were terribly frightened, whimpering for their parents, and then obeying their mother did not dare to make any more noise. Outside, there was shouting, and the mother telling strangers that there was no one in the house. Then the cry of the father outside the door, and the scream of the mother. One after another, and silence. The little sister used her small hand to hold her brother's mouth tightly, stopping the crying for his mother. She was old enough to know that her parents had been murdered by vampires, and the only way for the sisters to survive was to remain absolutely silent, with no one to protect them right now. Outside the doorway, she saw half a face staring inside searching. Cold red eyes, thin lips and a small fong outward, he smirked slightly and left. The memories passed like footage from a short dream of Lisa, the little girl sitting in the lecture hall of the academy. With her long, light purple hair, braided into two small braids, she looked so gentle, especially her light blonde eyes that seemed to contain a lot of tears in them. She always has her hair covering half of her face, does not often smile and talk with other students at this academy. She came here to study as a student only because it was a way for her to pay for her brother Xiao Ling's medical illness. Unlike others here, she does not consider vampires to be her superior breed and master. Lisa walked through the corridor, hearing the gossip the girls and boys were chatting about. No one noticed the little girl who had just passed them. The girls were laughing at each other, they were bragging about the prince drinking his blood. One girl excitedly said last night that the prince had just sucked her blood. The other girl sneered, guessing that the prince would usually say, it doesn't taste good, and then he would leave. Lisa was walking when a schoolboy called her, asking her to bring books to the music room. Anyone could make her, Lisa thought, why me, if only no one saw her, it would be good. Thinking of this, Lisa couldn't refuse, she quietly carried the book towards the music room. In the room, a guy was standing near a beautiful brunette schoolgirl, he slowly approached, the girl, lightning fast put her arms around her, biting her neck. The brunette didn't have time to protest, two sharp teeth were embedded in her neck, the blood coming out was drained by the other. A small sip made him bored, it doesn't taste good. She immediately fell to the ground and fainted. Lisa just then opened the door to the music room, seeing this scene. A vampire, her thoughts flashing, Lisa turned and ran towards the door. A haunting and dirty sight, Lisa had to get away with it quickly. But she couldn't escape. A strong hand grabbed her shoulder, pinning Lisa to the ground. It's so loud, no one has ever dared to show such disdain for me, shouted the vampire. His amber eyes lit up, the predator's gaze staring at Lisa's face lying on the floor in fear. The gaze of triumph, anticipation, scrutiny. Lisa tried to resist, she shouted don't touch me with dirty hands. In response to Lisa, a slight smile said, don't you want to seduce me too? The young vampire held Lisa's hand across his head with one hand. One hand cupped the girl's thigh, the smooth and soft feeling making him lose control of his hand, caressing Lisa's skin. Lisa struggled, and as the maniac loosened his grip on her, Lisa swung her hand and tried to slap him hard in the face. But that wasn't enough for Lisa to escape. It even stimulates the curiosity of someone who is frantic. He grabbed Lisa's wrist and bent down to touch her cheek lightly, then gently kissed her wrist. The taste was so enticing, he was pleased to talk about the taste he had just smelled from her hand. Lisa begged him in fear not to suck her blood. The vampire pressed close to his face in hers, whispering isn't that what people like you want, or proud to have me suck blood. She remembered the face of her family's killer that year. The cold gaze and the face were quite similar. At the same angle, Lisa felt extreme fear and disgust as the memory came back. She swung her hand hard, slapping him in the face. Her nails left a scratch on his cheekbone. Apathy filled his eyes. One hand touched the scratch mark on his cheekbone, and he raised his blood-stained finger to look. He was really angry. After a loud shout, he dragged Lisa to the balcony overlooking the school grounds. 
This is where students often look up, where princes often stand and watch. That position was only for nobles like him to step into, in a position higher than human. And he's the prince, Z.O.G. The ruler of the vampire nobles, and the human slaves. Standing on the high balcony, a prince grabbed Lisa's wrist, raised it high, and said loudly. All the practitioners and servants below simultaneously turned their heads to look up at them, listening reverently. And the order of the owner of this castle today is simple, for everyone, to use and bully the girl standing next to him right now. Lisa lowered her head in fear, not daring to imagine anything for her after this statement. It was a terrifying punishment. No one had ever made the prince so angry. This sentence made the students excited, the human students enjoyed being punished by this girl. And the nobles wondered about the man with the big liver who dared to win against the prince. They were all ready to torment that girl. Lisa's nightmare may be irredeemable. This world has become so cruel. All ready to trample on each other, and also the main. Lisa sat on the brick floor, tears silently falling. As Han Di stood there, he looked down at the crowd below, smiling faintly. He had always hated humanity from the day he was deceived by that woman. Han Di watched as the people wanted to devour the little girl at his feet, further confirming his belief that humans are stupid, greedy, and vile. Han Di watched Lisa sadly get up and disappear into the long corridor, thinking to herself, they only know how to hide, it's a coward. Han Di sighed, smiling slightly. When he was a child, he had his own blood sacrificer, the woman's name was Fu Lei. She promised to be by his side forever. But then one day, he searched everywhere to find the woman, but she disappeared. His brother, who is now the academy's administrator, said at the time that she had moved to a better workplace. Han Di was extremely angry, she herself had promised to take care of him forever, yet she had deceived him even for a small benefit. Han Di sighed and left the balcony and returned to his own room. Lisa tried to avoid everyone after the incident. But even when she tried to avoid the encounter, they were still looking for her. In the corner of the garden behind a row of classrooms, Lisa was stopped by a group of female students who insulted and beat her. They pulled Lisa's hair and slapped her face, though she didn't fight back. It was only when she was so hurt by a girl grabbing her hair and pinning her to the ground that Lisa shouted you guys listen to vampire orders like that? Do you have dignity after all? Hearing that from Lisa, the girls laughed louder, the more they mocked Lisa. Is she talking about dignity? Can a filthy daughter who wants to seduce a prince talk about dignity? She leaned her face closer, pulled her hair and held Lisa's head to face hers, and continued, Can dignity be eaten? They hit Lisa even harder, knocking her to the ground, humiliating her even worse. Lisa didn't say anything more, she couldn't fight them, she couldn't use words to make them stop. Lisa bit her teeth to endure each of their slaps, tears in her eyes. In the distance, a pair of eyes watched silently. He frowned angrily and sadly, he thought to himself, don't take it anymore. He just needed submission from Lisa, and he had been waiting for it for now, but he hadn't heard any pleas for help from Lisa, she was still holding back the blow. Prince, you want to discuss some things with you, please hurry to the meeting room, a voice said from behind, startling Prince Handi, to turn his head. The servant, surprised by the anxious expression on his face, asked timidly, Sir, your expression. Han Di sneaked away the tears that had just fallen on her cheeks, calmly saying many things. Then he left for the castle's meeting room. In addition to the garden corner, a schoolgirl grabbed Lisa's hair, wanting to cut it off, Lisa panicked and ran away from them. She hugged her ached body, already thin and weak, full of scratches and bruises. Lisa nestled in a corner, scared of solitude. She had just escaped a blow, what else would come again? From now on, she would have to hide from them after school to avoid being bullied. But she couldn't avoid them all. Not only did schoolgirls want to attack her, there were also boys, with human blood. The three boys stared at her, laughing at the sight of her battered form. It seems they've been waiting here before. Putting a cigarette in his hand, one of them walked up to Lisa and said, Come play with me, we haven't been satisfied in a long time. They got close to Lisa, one of them grabbed her by the shoulders, wanting to strip her of her shirt. Bastards, Lisa had no way to escape from these tall people, she was not yet 1 meter 60 centimeters tall. She pleaded I can give you all my savings, please let me go back to the dorm to get it. But contrary to Lisa's slim hopes, they didn't need the money. They excitedly declared that they would only let her go after they had 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 enough fun. Lisa desperately bit the arm that was grabbing her collar with all her might. He pulled back the arm bitten by Lisa bleeding reflexively, screaming in pain, letting go of Lisa's hand. 
Immediately the little girl used the last of her strength to escape. Taken by surprise, they couldn't hold Lisa back. Chased her all the way to the schoolyard. Lisa ran towards the crowd and called for help, but the response was only nonchalance and laughter from them, no one stopped her from helping the hoodlums. Lisa desperately ran up a small passageway, across a narrow staircase, wanting to run back to the dormitory. But as soon as she ran to the stairs, Lisa was stopped by a foot. Lisa recognized the look of Miss Mai, the owner of the foot that had just caused her to tumble. Lisa screamed, tumbling from the top flight of stairs to the floor. With a loud noise, Lisa lay in a pool of her own blood, fainting. On the balcony of the prince's residence, two men leaned against the railing, tall and thin in stature. They stood there pensively for a moment, in the still moonlight, their voices becoming clear. You didn't save her? She was beaten, she fell down the stairs, she was humiliated by the men. No, the prince replied quickly. Really, even if it was all Mai's idea, Mai's gift to that girl, the guy with the flowing brown hair smirked slightly. So what? The prince propped his hand against the balcony railing and straightened up, and he walked silently towards the old room in the student block. In that room, on the dusty old bed lying in the pile of old furniture, a small body lay motionless, hair. In this old warehouse, there are three more men and a well-dressed girl. It was Miss Mai, who was standing among the thuggish students in the afternoon chasing Lisa. Mai bent down and squeezed Lisa's face with her hand, causing her so much pain that she dreamily woke up. Of course, your appearance and that pig are the same, no wonder the prince is so disgusted. Finishing her sentence, Mai threw Lisa's head the bed, leaving her stunned beyond thinking. As she turned to leave, Mai told the three hoodlums who were waiting for orders, that they could have fun or ruin and dispose of the toy on the bed if they wanted. All three of them rushed to tear off the layers of Lisa's shirt that had fallen asleep on the bed. The layers were ripped off, revealing the girl's fragile body, smooth white skin, and a full round chest. They were about to pounce on the girl to satisfy their lust. Suddenly there was a loud shout of stop the hand. It was Prince Hondi. He approached quickly from the shed door, cold eyes sweeping over them all. The three thugs knew what to do, immediately took their hands off Lisa's body, stood away from the bed, trembling and said, it was Miss Mai who sent us. Quail. The Lord roared, causing the three bastards to bow and run a circuit to escape. At this time, only Mai stood blankly, not understanding what she had done wrong. She stammered and said, Sir Hondi, isn't that your will, I just want to help you. Looking at Mai's family, Hondi coldly said, don't do it yourself. Quail. She shivered out of the room, not daring to say another word. At this time, Hondi sat down on the old bed, his ha. Nd pressed against the little girl's scratched face, unable to help but caress the wounds. Hondi slipped his hand under the back of the girl's neck, stared at the painfully tired face that was fainting, and lightly kissed a wound on her forehead. Hondi lightly licked the wound, wiping the blood stains from her face with her tongue. The wound immediately heals. Although Lisa was not wearing a shirt at this time, Hondi didn't pay attention to it, he only noticed the injuries that made her wince. Awake, this gentle sound not only Lisa but everyone had never heard from the prince's mouth. When Lisa opened her eyes, the prince's look of pity disappeared, replaced by normal indifference. You bear it well, I give you a chance to beg, and I will spare you, the prince said. Lisa suppressed the pain, biting her teeth silently, but her face didn't stop grimacing. She was tired and not fully awake from the fall and those fights. Hondi lost her patience and asked Lisa, when are you going to be stubborn after all? Lisa was sad and very tired, she just lay still, her hands slouched, she couldn't pull back her shirt to cover herself, whispering I'm human, I have self-esteem. Her voice was full of reproach and despair. The young master held his head and laughed, stupid. I have decided that you will become a sacrificer of my blood. If it wasn't you, it would be your sick little brother, think twice, he said, one hand still clutching her arm. Don't, I beg you. Lisa was desperate. I agree. Hondi leaned into Lisa's ear and whispered, never mention your poor self-esteem from now on, remember you must exist for me, at all costs. Said and bent down on Lisa's neck and devoured it, the blood gushing out was sucked clean by him. The sensation of touching her soft white skin made Hondi unable to stop. Lisa was still only half wearing the shirt that had been ripped off by the thugs, the front of her chest making direct contact with the prince's tall body in a thin layer of underwear. The two were filled with layers of mixed emotions. Anger and fear, longing and disgust, strangeness and nostalgia. Hondi wrapped her arms around Lisa's waist holding tightly, her lips suddenly leaving the girl's neck as she touched her thin body, so fragile, 
she couldn't bear to suck too much blood like he used to do with the other servants. Hondi paused, smiling contentedly at her sense of satisfaction, while Lisa fell asleep wearily again. The prince picked up the girl gently. Even if he was only a human, with his height, Hondi could easily carry her with one hand, let alone he was a pure-blood descendant of the blood-sucking race. Hondi took Lisa back to his room, gently placing her down on the large sofa in the middle of the room, to the surprise of the servants. The prince instructed the maid standing beside him, to take her to a clean bed. Say it and leave. Passing by another large room, the manager held the cup of tea he was about to put on to drink, saw Hondi immediately turned his head and asked, Hondi, did you just bring back a girl? Hondi turned his head to leave, it's nothing to do with anyone, it's my personal business. Taking a sip of tea, the manager said softly, I'm not afraid that will make you a laughing stock, remember your position. As the brother and administrator of this academy, I must remind you that you have grown up. Is that child very much like your child sacrifice, Fule? Hondi didn't speak, and went back to his room. Two servants opened the door for the prince, reporting the situation of the girl in the room. But there were no girls in the room. The prince frowned and looked around, only a strip of towels tied at the window. When Lisa had run away was unknown. Stubbornly, he shook his head, running towards the forest outside the window. Lisa had just run outside a few minutes ago, aiming straight for the forest, Lisa was about to cross it to get back to her dorm. But as soon as Lisa entered, the crow suddenly flew up and chased after her closely. The frightened Lisa used all her weak strength to run away, the slower she ran the more she ran with fatigue and fear. Darkness was coming again to cover the forest, the deeper it got, the darker it became. Hondi holds a lamp and follows Lisa's direction. As soon as she walked a distance she heard a loud scream, it was Lisa, she reached for the crows to attack, slipped and was falling off the cliff. Hondi rushed forward, as fast as he could, grabbing Lisa's arm and pulling it back, the other clinging to a large branch, growing on the cliff. What an annoying girl, Hondi had just finished muttering when the dry branch could no longer bear the weight of both of them, breaking sprinkles. Lisa didn't understand what had happened to her and Hondi's act of jumping to save her when his arms wrapped around her and they both fell to the ground. Hondi didn't die. And so was Lisa, in his arms. But his waist was covered in blood. Get out, Hondi shouted. Lisa watched in confusion as his blood soaked his white shirt, and the blood stained her name, he was quite thin. Walking away before he drained her blood, Hondi held back the pain from the wound in her hip. Lisa sat on her knees in front of him, whispering, why save me? She hesitated and pulled down the string of her nightgown over her shoulders, okay, you suck, if I can't stand it I'll push you away myself. Lisa now said to herself, this situation she should do, she shouldn't be indebted to anyone, especially vampires. Hondi laughed, why did she do that? Was it deliberately seducing him? Her dress and gentle demeanor indeed made it difficult for him to contain his lust. Hondi rushed over and pinned Lisa to the ground, one hand wrapped around her leg, sliding lightly up her thigh, deep in the dress, the other touching her thin shoulders. His face met Lisa's at a close distance. Where do you want me to start? In response to him, Lisa asked, don't you want to suck blood? Why would you even want to do that? She tried to push him away from her, but the more she resisted, the closer his hand squeezed her, his soft breath close to her ear, he grumbled, the main toy's job is to do as the master says. Lisa tried to resist, but his lips touched her neck, taking a deep breath. Lisa was silent without screaming, she knew there was no point in doing so. But moments later, nothing happened, he suddenly stopped. Hondi helped her sit up, hugging and supporting her still weak body from behind. Having just experienced the blows, the stumbles, the scary chase earlier, Lisa was too tired. She sat quietly in his arms, the feeling of security and comfort taking over her mind like an addictive drug. She didn't know what was going on anymore, like a nightmare. The earlier licks on her body healed her old and new wounds, leaving her in as little pain as possible. She asked Hondi quietly, why don't you suck my blood? The master did what he liked, he replied. Stop the noise, he squeezed the embrace that was surrounding her. Strong and gentle at the same time. I don't want to waste my time going to catch you. The duel didn't last long. Hondi was tired of healing Lisa's wounds, and also because his wounds were still bleeding. He fell asleep on her shoulder. A moment after confirming that Hondi was not awake, Lisa gently removed his hand and tried to leave. But his lightning-fast hand gripped her wrist and held it back. You want to go? He said angrily. Me, I just want to walk around. Lisa tried to justify her escape. 
Han Di struggled to get up, appeared to be as strong as before, clenched her fist and led Lisa to find the exit. This forest for humans is very poisonous and dangerous, people entering here will almost die, do you want to lead the way? He was sarcastic. Lisa heard this frightened and obediently walked close behind the prince. The feeling of security suddenly made her not want to withdraw her hand from his, and she herself didn't notice it, as a reflex nestled next to him. Walking for a while, memory awakened, Lisa wanted to remove her other hand, she said with sincere pleading I'm afraid, but I don't want to be led away by you like that. Handi stood back, turned to Lisa, pulled her to face him, his hands holding her shoulders. He laughed lightly, humans seem to want to fight demons lately, don't they? I love the way you shiver in confusion when I touch you like that, you keep putting up with that feeling. Lisa angrily tugged away from Handi's arm. But with her current health, she was so weak that she fell to the ground on her own, the fall causing her additional pain. She looked disheveled now, stand up. Looking at Lisa's expression without any strength, Handi couldn't help but be angry. He sighed. Lisa was enthralled, in a nightmare, the scene in the forest filled with fear appeared, Handi stood in front of her, slapped her with a heavenly blow. No, she shouted. Then a young male figure appeared, a familiar loving figure, it was Xiao Lang, her younger brother. But he did not move towards his sister, Xiao Ling evaded, disgusted by his sister, because she had compromised with the vampire. The silhouette of her brother vanished into Lisa's fear and suffering. She woke up, calling her brother's name, crying. She didn't know how to deal with her dead parents and poor brother, who was still in the vampire prince's castle. Lisa looked out the window that had been blocked by wooden slats. Han Di must have wanted, Han Di must have wanted to warn her not to run away again. Lisa tried to bang on the door of the room wanting to go out, but only one maiden entered, telling her to stay in the room obediently until she got better, this place was the young master for her. Lisa couldn't help but be locked in this little cage, trying to get out. The sound of arguing caught the prince's attention. He ordered the door opened, cavalierly entering. When the door opened, rushing at him as Lisa, she wanted to rush out. Lisa was immediately detained, Han Di grabbed her arm, pulled her back, and threw it on the bed. Exasperated, he shouted do you still want to run away? Didn't you take the initiative to offer your blood to me last night, you are so cute and charming. Han Di held Lisa's hands on her head, locking her tightly to keep her from struggling. Lisa vaguely remembered what had happened yesterday. The prince tells her th. At after the zone runs away from him, she has been hit by poison gas in the forest, those who inhale the poison gas will hallucinate, go forever to death. And to get out of this exposed position, Lisa pushed the prince's hand away. But her hand was grabbed again, held tightly aloft. This stimulated Handi even more, his smile flashing. Lisa exclaimed what are you going to do? Breakfast, he replied, leaning his face close to her neck, biting lightly, the blood dripping out bit by bit which he slowly swallowed. Handi was not greedy, just took a little blood from his prey and let go, slowly standing up. Instructing the servant to watch Lisa carefully, he walked out and slammed the large door shut. The next day, in town A, Xiaoling was waiting on the road at the head of town, his gentle expression shining with eagerness. Answering some acquaintances, Xiaoling boasted that his sister would return today. Sharing the good news with him, some of them murmured in low voices about the poor boy. Such a young man was weakly ill, otherwise maybe with his beauty, he would have become a favorite sacrificer of the vampire clan, unfortunately. It is the worldview of people in this world, and for Xiaoling, it is hatred and disgust. If it wasn't for the scholarship money to cure him, his sister wouldn't have had to go to the demon race's school. Xiaoling stood sadly in a corner and waited for the ride where his sister would appear. But only one girl appeared, she was young and quite calm. She recognized Xiaoling from afar, because of her slender and thin body, especially his pale yellow eyes like his sister. The girl said in a low voice, claiming to be Lisa's classmate, announcing that his sister was having trouble at school in Sea City, and that he should go there immediately. At this time in the castle, the maiden announced that the little girl in the room had not eaten or drunk for two days. Huh, the prince frowned, what a nuisance, he said and walked straight into the room. As soon as he entered, he yelled at her. He scolded repeatedly, using irrational arguments to tell Lisa. Finally, when he had lost all patience, Han Di flipped the blanket over, pulled Lisa's hand that was covered on the bed, the blanket fell off, the fragile girl's body in the nightgown softened his heart. At that moment, the outside announced that Lady Lisa's younger brother Xiao Ling had arrived and wanted to see the prince. Lisa was stunned, what she feared had come so soon. 
Hondi said coldly, you want to go home today? This was probably why she wanted to leave, right? Her family members had arrived, she should be glad of it. Lisa was terribly frightened, her eyes filled with tears. If Xiaolang came here, he would only be in danger. Plus, her brother would see this pathetic sight of hers, she would be heartbroken. Handi had no difficulty judging Lisa's thoughts, he was pleased that she was in such an awkward situation. He told her to stand still behind the curtain and sent a servant to lead Xiaoling in. On the host's chair, Handi looked at the frightened skinny boy at the door. He crept in. Are you Lisa's little brother? The question was somewhat superfluous, since their faces were quite similar, their features sad and their eyes and light brown hair. What's the matter with you coming to find me? Handi asked. The boy immediately knelt down trembling, please, sir, prince, let go of my sister. In response, the prince smiled slightly, it seems that your sister's temperaments are not very similar, I worry a little bit. Xiaoling continued to plead, please spare my sister, if she makes you angry, I will take responsibility for her. Okay, just get up first Han Di soothed the young man's nervous mood. But as soon as he got up, Xiaoling fell to the ground and fainted. Lisa watched from behind the door hurriedly pull away from the assistant who was holding her tightly, rushing to hug her brother. Xiao Lang, wake up. Han Di could no longer keep his composure in the face of this situation, and sent someone to call the most famous doctor in the city. The booster shot helped Xiao Lang stabilize. The prince told the assistant who checked Xiao Lang into the hospital immediately. Han Di stood pensively, turning around to say something more to Lisa, but stopped. Without letting him speak, Lisa reeled and fell, thankfully Han Di was able to catch up, sparing her a fall that hit her head on the floor. Lisa had lost her strength after the past few days, adding to the incident that had left her completely exhausted. Han Di carried her to her room, placed her lightly on the bed, and in his heart was full of grief, he sat there until Lisa woke up after a few hours. Xiao Lang, Lisa dreamily tried to get up and look for her younger brother but only saw the prince sitting in front of him staring at her intently. Rest assured, your brother is stable, I have arranged for him to be treated at the best hospital. Handi nervously sat next to Lisa, her hand next to Lisa, ready to help her from being stunned and falling down again. Really? Lisa asked again, her voice weak. I'm not lying, Handi insisted. Your body is still very weak, you should rest more and then visit him, avoid causing him to worry more about you, Handi gently analyzed. Holding a bowl of soup in his hand that was about to scoop up a spoonful for Lisa, she stepped back, saying she wasn't hungry. After a few sentences, Lisa took the bowl herself, but her arm was so weak that she could no longer hold the small bowl herself. Handi ran out of patience, grabbed the bowl of soup and started shoveling a small piece, bringing it to his mouth to blow away the heat. The prince brought the spoonful of soup close to her mouth, leaving her no choice but to open her mouth to eat obediently. She had no way of resisting this tender compulsion. Her mood was too complicated right now, too tired to think. As promised, the next morning, when Lisa was able to stand better, Handi took her to the hospital. Her brother is conscious and is being given fluids by doctors. She held a bowl of porridge for her brother, but he shook his head not wanting to eat. Are you tired somewhere? Lisa asked. No, the doctor said that if you take medicine regularly, you will be fine, Xiaoling said, his hand holding his sister's. With a much larger stature, he now looked more like Lisa's older brother. On the contrary, the one who needs to be taken care of is you. At school she had to endure so many scary things. And I can't help, I have to beg for vampire's ignorance cowardly. Xiaoling said in helplessness and sadness. Lisa hurriedly hugged her brother, comforting him. As long as I have you, I will feel fine, we need to cheer up, overcome difficulties together. Let's eat porridge now, Lisa gently gave her brother the whole bowl of porridge, and then asked his younger brother if he wanted to eat porridge, of course, Xiaoling did not refuse. Han Di who was standing outside the door seeing Lisa's love for her younger brother suddenly felt uncomfortable. He interrupted their conversation. That's enough, follow me back, he said. Elzi said goodbye to his younger brother and followed Han Di out of the hospital room. In the hallway, their conversation was so small that it was as if nothing had happened. I thought you were going to try to leave? Handi asked. No, I've thought it through. I won't fight anymore, but I hope my brother is safe, and I don't want to be imprisoned anymore, Lisa said with a hard bow. His heart was full of confusion mixed with feelings of resentment. Handi was satisfied with the contract, he had his favorite sacrificer without the use of force. Darkness fell in the castle, and after a long day, 
Han Di stood with his back against the balcony watching the sky. His friend and assistant stood with him. After a long time, Han Di said, find out who revealed the story of the castle to Lisa's brother. Another quipped our prince treats Cinderella well. Han Di smiled genuinely, here he doesn't need to be a tough young master anymore, you just need to watch me two cousins carefully. A few days later, Lisa returned to the classroom after recovering. As she walked through the corridor of the classroom, Lisa had to listen to the dirty gossip of the students about her. They are saying that she has been seduced and happily carried away by the prince for several days now. Lisa was silent, not wanting to be bothered again. But it wasn't that she wanted to be quiet. Several schoolgirls called her to her feet, and immediately, a painful slap landed on Lisa's face, taking her by surprise. Lisa looked angrily at the two men who had just hit her. My stamina was limited, Lisa grabbed her hand. The two began to scuffle, Lisa with weak stamina easily held by her, preparing for a blow. The schoolgirl standing next to her opened a knife along the paper and prepared to scratch it into Lisa's cheek. Suddenly from behind, a hand grabbed her knife-wielding arm, squeezing it so hard that she dropped the knife on the ground. A stern male voice stopped the brawl. I'm a member of the school's disciplinary team, Sanne, please stop this joke until school is out. The two schoolgirls walked away eagerly. Lisa bowed her head in thanks to the person who had just helped her. Aren't you afraid of involvement? She asked him. Oh, I have nothing to worry about them. People have to help each other, the disciplinary commissioner assured her. Her face was injured, and he pointed to the red-purple mark on Lisa's face, saying she needed to be taken to the infirmary to treat her wounds. Lisa nodded. They went to the infirmary. San Ney found her a pack of compresses. Said he would take her to class every day, avoiding the bullying of the others. And so from the next day, Lisa was told by the people in the academy that she seduced the school's disciplinary commissioner as well. Lisa and San Ney walked past them silently, Lisa's heart really tired of this place. Thank you, Lisa said. Just call me San Ney, he said with a laugh. Lisa laughed, the smile she hadn't seen on her face for a long time was genuine. Her cheeks were extraordinarily beautiful, her pale golden eyes gleaming. And the sight caught the sight of the prince who was standing in the distance watching them. His gaze darkened and then turned red. He walked over quickly, interrupting their conversation by tugging at Lisa's hand. To everyone's amazement. Why is that? Lisa said after being thrown onto the big bed in his room. Since you are my own sacrificer, I have the right to use it at any time. He laughed angrily. Whoever is nice to you, you're willing to laugh and entertain them, it's vile. Han Di tugged at the hair that was covering half of Lisa's face, the big bruise from the slap now looked pitiful. The prince rubbed her cheek lightly. Who hit you? he asked. You've made me a target for everyone's entertainment. Lisa exclaimed reproachfully and wearily. She turned to look at him to vent her resentment. But the anger in her heart disappeared as soon as she met his gentle gaze. Looking at the pain on her face, he felt a sharp pain, forgetting to look grumpy all the time. What should she do after all when her heart raced against the man's breath above her, his face so beautiful, the deep gaze that was looking at her was that of that blood-sucking murderous race she hated to the bone. Lisa hadn't had time to think about his strange attitude, when his face was close to hers. Hondi lightly licked the cheekbones where her wound was with her tongue. Licking like a cat, the feeling of a lustful kiss. Hondi stopped and hugged Lisa's face, close to his. Silent in that position for a moment, Lisa seemed dreamy and confused, not knowing what to do, she didn't resist, just opened her eyes to look up at the face that was touching her cheek. Hondi suddenly sat up, smiling cunningly, there is progress. She seemed to be looking forward to this. The body cannot lie. So let's move on. He touched her back finger lightly to her lips, not having time for her to protest, continuing to run his fingers lightly along her chin, neck, and the first button of her uniform. Lisa didn't mean to resist either. Now that she was truly his slave, she had no choice but to submit. Entangled, remove your own clothes. He abruptly ordered. Lisa was stunned, sitting up to follow, she slowly unbuttoned each button, layer by layer, layer by layer. Hondi in the corner of the bed lost patience and rushed to hug Lisa from behind. The desire for lust surged through him as he touched the soft warm body behind the last layer of clothing. Suddenly Hondi suddenly stopped, stepped back a little, he saw tears fall from the corners of Lisa's eyes. Putting his clothes back on, he closed his eyes and sighed and ordered. He snarled in her ear, slowly saying, if next time you dare to play with men in front of me, I will teach you to be more careful. 
Lisa bowed her head silently, though she didn't quite understand what he meant, it was the slave's job to obey orders. The next day, Lisa was still the focus of gossip among the students. She hugged her stack of books and walked towards her classroom, bowing her head pretending not to know as usual. Sanne came running back to call out to her. With a worried look, he grabbed Lisa's arm, asking if she had been forced by DJI. Sanne said she was sorry for not being able to help her in that case. He pulled Lisa to a secluded corner, leaned close to her and whispered, It's pretty discreet here, you can tell me everything, trust me. Lisa shook her head, I didn't want anything to do with him. Sanne said I know what you are afraid of, and I absolutely will not ignore it, I will help you, he insisted. Lisa again refused help from Sanne, turning her head to walk away, but Sanne held her hand back, pointing to the fresh bite mark on her neck, a worried look in her eyes. Lisa said nothing, said goodbye to him and turned away. Back at the castle, Handi was waiting to sit in the living room. His hand twirled a glass of expensive wine and looked at it. As soon as he saw Lisa's figure enter, he sarcastically said, going to school makes you seem so excited, doesn't it? Lisa said seriously, I didn't break my covenant. He didn't shrink any further, waving Lisa to sit down next to him. A foot away, he impatiently pulled Lisa's hand causing her to tumble into his lap. Lisa sat on his lap, scared and let go. Such an attitude towards your master, it seems that I should teach you more how to submit, he said, wrapping his arms down to squeeze Lisa's waist. You're not my master, Lisa argued. You are in my own possession, Hondi said, and this time Lisa was tired of resisting him. She chose silence. The prince handed the glass of wine to Lisa, telling her to drink it. I will forgive you for being disrespectful when you drink it. Lisa honestly said she couldn't drink. Hondi changed his suggestion, pulling Lisa out onto the balcony, then give me a dance. After a few clumsy steps, Lisa tuned in with the prince's footsteps, in the soft moonlight, the soft music soothing their souls. He asked Lisa, did you ever learn to dance? She said she used to watch my parents dance as a child. So follow me to this weekend's wine party, you prepare, he instructed. Lisa was disgusted when she heard about vampires, there was so much more to see, she stopped herself from throwing up. Sorry, I was a little uncomfortable in person, I couldn't get there, Lisa said, immediately running away. You seem to have overindulged her, a voice said from behind, accompanied by a sneer. DJI walked away in exasperation, despite the person behind him continuing to walk behind him and muttering, you used to party alone, now you even bring her. After a while, DJI stopped abruptly, without turning his head and said, just show her the wolf den, she will understand that there is no one who can protect her, but me. The friend now laughed your possessiveness is terrifying. Where are you going, Hondi? He asked. Hondi laughed, teach that disciplinary commissioner a little. On the way towards the dormitory, Lisa meets a man who appears to be almost 40 years old, quite tall in stature and resembles Hondi. It was the steward of this academy, she rarely saw them. He didn't seem surprised to see Lisa. Who allowed you to wander around here, he said in a cold voice, as he bent down to observe the little girl in front of him. Of course you look like the scapegoat before, he said and he pushed Lisa backwards, causing her to fall into the fountain in the middle of the academy grounds. The water wasn't deep, Lisa just sat in the water, full of fear. He stepped forward, lifting one of Lisa's braids, especially this hair. He smiled slightly in disdain, this girl was probably a substitute for Han Di. I advise you not to be too daydreamy. My people don't need your teaching. You idiot, don't even stand up for me, he said as he held out his hand in front of her. That's the order, he continued when he saw Lisa's bewildered look. She raised her hand to grab the prince's arm and stood up, her wet clothes tight to her body making her both cold and visible. The prince immediately took off the coat he was wearing and draped it over her shoulders, his loose tunic covering almost to Lisa's knees, discreetly, and giving her a sense of security. DJI put on Lisa's shoulder and took her to her room. Lisa's mind grew more and more confused, not knowing how to balance the feeling of disgust and the thought of wanting to be protected by him. She walked silently beside him. Arriving at the door of the room he arranged for her, the prince let go, telling her not to wander around in this place, and to stay away from the steward, Hanti said with a genuinely worried and serious expression. Also, prepare well for tomorrow's party, don't embarrass me, he said coldly and left. Just two steps away, Hanti didn't look back, adding, hurry up and change, don't let being sick affect my wine party. Lisa silently bowed to the prince, changed her clothes and ended another exhausting day in bed. But the dreams didn't let her go. 
In her dreams the chaotic memories made her frightened and sad. She saw her parents return. Seeing a whole girl who seemed to be a few years older than her, she had exactly the same eye color and hair as her. She greeted her haven't seen her in a long time. So scared, Lisa woke up, this was the first time she had dreamed of that woman, she looked so familiar, so strange. The next morning, Lisa arrived at class sleep-deprived, ignoring all her usual gossip. Now they no longer dare to hit her, because they know that the prince and the disciplinary commissioner are protecting her. After sitting for a while, a female student came running up to her, announcing that a phone was calling her. Lisa has only one relative, her younger brother Xiao Lang, and he is too weak due to illness. Hearing the phone, Lisa ran over to answer the phone. Over the phone, Lisa was informed that her brother had suddenly deteriorated and that she needed to go to the hospital immediately. Lisa hung up and rushed outside, but the school gate wasn't that easy to get into. Two boys on duty outside the gate stopped her, it was not yet time for school to be dismissed and no one was allowed in or out without the consent of the teacher, except special people. Currently, Lisa cannot get a teacher's permit to go out, her brother is critical, Lisa is almost mad, trying to cry but can't. At least tomorrow she can go out. While she didn't know what to do, a hand patted her shoulder, both reassuring and asking her the reason for going out in a hurry, which was San Ney. Lisa and two boys from the academy's security team narrated the story to San Ney. Unable to get out by pleading, San Ney pulled Lisa to a secluded corner and said I have a rather risky way, would you like to hear it? San Ney looked timid, of course Lisa wanted to try everything, now even if she risked her life she was willing to go to her brother. In addition to the teacher's passport, there is also the badge of the vampire clan that can help you out. Hondi definitely has one, and with your relationship with him now, maybe borrowing a little bit is not very dangerous. Lisa says she wants to try and borrow Hondi because he helped Shaoling get treatment at that expensive hospital, but San holds her shoulder and asserts that that badge is very important to the vampire clan, if you ask and he doesn't agree, the only chance is gone. Lisa couldn't think of anything else, and San Ney answered her question again about why he was helping her so wholeheartedly. He said out of remorse in the past, having looked down on a girl like Lisa, when she was oppressed by the blood-sucking clan and asked for help but only received scorn from her own kind, that girl committed suicide by jumping off the school grounds. That made San Ney regret not saving her. And he is trying to help Lisa to avoid a repeat tragedy. San Ney further informs Lisa that the prince is busy for this week's party and that he has often gotten into trouble with the academy's administration due to recent irregularities that have affected the clan's reputation, protecting a servant, Lisa. Lisa thanked the disciplinary commissioner and returned to the castle. From a distance Lisa saw Hondi go out, perhaps he was going to prepare for that important party. The prince turned around, looked at Lisa with a strange expression, and asked her if she had anything to implore him for. The look of pleasure and cunning on her face made Lisa wary again. She was originally going to ask him to borrow that badge, but seeing his arrogant face, she decided to follow San Ney's advice. Lisa said, I'm worried about my brother, and want to go there and see him. Hondi interrupted her, he is being taken care of and monitored very well, you don't need to worry like that. Before he could finish his sentence, a servant approached to remind the prince that he was late, and he got into his car and left. As she walked, Lisa obediently stayed in the rehearsal room for the party. Lisa waited for him to leave, immediately running into the castle. The place was too large, and Lisa was approved to travel freely here. She easily stole a key to open Hondi's room door, no one suspected anything about the behavior of the master's personal sacrifice, she had certain privileges of being his servant. Lisa began rummaging and quickly found the badge that was solemnly placed in a precious box. It's shiny and easy to recognize. San Ney waited for her near the main gate saying he would come along to help her if she needed something. Lisa used it through the control outside the gate, while waiting for the gate to open, the two stood watching inside, behind the cover was an academy, this place was actually a cage that held humans, said and then they rushed to the hospital when the gate opened. After running for a while, Lisa discovered that someone was secretly following them. Sanne said that it was probably Hondi's people and they found out about her using the badge to escape, but because of Hondi's good relationship with her, they didn't do anything to her at the moment, they just watched. San Ney tells Lisa to go first and he will stay behind. Lisa ran to the hospital alone with all her might, the distance from the academy to the hospital was not too far so she could jog there. But before her eyes, her brother was very healthy, obediently sitting on the bed reading a book. Lisa startled to reach into her pocket, the badge was gone, 
she was scared for a moment then quickly regained her composure, said she missed her brother so she should visit and bring him candy but carelessly dropped it, the two talked for a few minutes, Lisa left immediately. Something wasn't right, who had called her, what they wanted in the end. When she returned to the academy, she didn't need the badge to get inside, and now she had to find it again. It was already dark, and Lisa carried the small lamp against the places she had passed during the day to get to the hospital. Following the passage leading from the castle to the main gate, she tried to search every bit but found none. Suspicion and fear welled up within her. Suddenly, Hondi's familiar voice sounded behind her, What are you doing here? Who allowed you out? He didn't seem to see Lisa so he was quite irritable and was looking for her. She hesitated for a moment, if he continued to lie, he would definitely find out the truth and then involve the disciplinary commissioner. And maybe San Ney wasn't as trustworthy as she thought. Lisa decides to tell Han Di the truth most of the time, except that San Ney is the one who directs her to steal the badge. But Han Di is not stupid, he says Lisa is not smart enough to know about the badge, immediately turns around and orders a servant to find the badge, and investigates a male student in the academy's disciplinary department named San Ney. The assistant hurriedly left. Han Di turned to look at Lisa, an angry expression on her face and grabbed her hand, and you, hurry up here. The prince pushed her heart against a tree, his hands forming a lock that held her back, facing him. Lisa was scared and repented for what she had just done. Although she hated the blood-sucking race, she was wrong about this theft. Lisa asked Handi tremblingly, what are you going to do? Punish you, of course. Handi bent down to insert her two sharp fangs in Lisa's neck, and began to suck every bit of blood. Lisa felt pain because Handi bit so roughly this time, she pushed him away with her hand. Han Di grabbed Lisa's wrist, biting her wrist, his eyes closed with satisfaction, he reduced the force of his teeth a little. Lisa suppressed the feeling of fear, but the tears kept falling. Han Di removed his lips from her hand, lowering his face to press against her thigh. At this time, Lisa was sitting on the ground, her legs were hugged and caressed by Han Di. If you call me master, maybe I'll be a little softer, Han Di laughed lightly. Darkness enveloped them, hiding all of their complicated feelings. Darkness also creates tranquility and privacy, which is perfect for expressing true feelings.